I welcome you back, and lest you think it's just the P and me yammering at you tonight, let's meet the third yammer on our broadcast team. We go to the sidelines. Here's Jimmy Watson, buddy. You know, Barry, I know up there, Petros has the cocoa and the gloves and the heater, and it's probably pretty toasty, but down here where the real, real men are, it's a little cold, man. The good thing is, no rain in the forecast, but if weather becomes an issue tonight, well, defense could be the difference. Either way, you want to keep an eye on Oregon's man in the middle. We're talking about Haloti Nada. This guy went off last week against California. You know how good he is. 11 tackles. That was a career high. He knocked down a couple of passes. And because of that, he's our U.S. Bank Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week. He is a supersized talent. 6'5", 340 pounds. Nick Aliotti, the defense coordinator for Oregon, says in 25 years of college football, this guy is hands down the best defensive tackle I have ever seen. One of his own teammates who has to block him in practice says it's like trying to stop a truck rolling downhill. Meanwhile, for Washington State, well, tonight is the dramatic return of their spiritual leader on defense, Will Dirty. He's missed the last five games with an MCL strain. And, of course, the defense just wasn't the same with him off the field. He'll be part-time tonight at best, maybe second and long, third and long. But just by dressing, he's going to give the Cougs a shot of adrenaline. He has 253 tackles, but tonight is his last game. It's the Washington State Cougar in Martin Stadium. It's the Cougs and the Ducks. It's college football on FSN. We put the ball in the tee. We come back to the Palouse. rain, locusts, anything. <laughs> Frogs. Frogs would be good. 50-yard line opens up and floods. Bill Doba's a wonderful man. He's a great coach, but he's had a lot of bad luck this year. They just haven't been able to pull out games in the fourth quarter. Last week, they actually took points off the board and ended up losing the game. They would have tied and sent it to overtime, but there's no finger pointing on this Washington State team. They are still a team. They still love each other. They still play for each other. And these guys love playing for Bill Doba. And the Oregon players likewise love playing for this guy, Mike Pilate, another one of the good guys, incidentally, in the Pac-10 Conference. Always enjoy talking to Mike as we did yesterday. He said, honestly, this team has surpassed my expectations. I really didn't know that we could be quite as good as we are. Kellen Clemens goes down. A lot of teams are just full to 10. Not these Oregon Ducks. They come back. They win two games in a row with a two-headed quarterback system. When Clemens went down two weeks ago, it was the defense that stepped up. And then it was the combination of Dennis Dixon and Brady Leaf who won it against a very good Cal team last week. Oregon is good. There's no question about it. They've done it quietly. A lot of people wrote them off after they lost to USC. They've done nothing but win Pac-10 games. There's a short kick. Stewart comes up, handles it. At the 17-yard line, trying to get to the outside. Now cuts it upfield. Knocked off his feet at the 35-yard line. But good field position for the Oregon Ducks. Odell Howard on special teams to make the stop for the Cougars. Oregon offensively, they will start the game with Dennis Dixon. We expect to see him, see him for two series, then Brady Lee for two series. They will alternate it that way for most of the first half. And then who's ever really rolling likely will get the team in the second half. Terrence Whitehead, he's a journeyman, gets the job done. Demetrius Williams, big target at wideout. Cameron Colvin, top recruit. Offensive line has played solidly, and according to the coaching staff, getting better with every out. First down at the 33-yard line. They go out of the gun. They will run a lot of option, and they'll run it all over the field. Dixon with 4-3 speed. Gonna put it up on first down, try and air it out deep. Throws it in double coverage, intended for Cameron Colvin well defended that time by the Cougs. Let's talk a little bit about the Cougs defensively. They are banged up, but nonetheless, there's no quit in this team. M. Christo Bruce, outstanding pass rusher, probably with Adam Braidwood, two best players on that down line. Braidwood playing with a sore shoulder. Will Dirting, as we said earlier, starting in the middle. We don't know how far nor how long he will be able to go, but a difference maker. And the secondary, as always, very good for the Washington State Cougars. They have put five secondary players into the NFL in the last three years. Dixon gonna throw again. Steps up, does, does throw, and it is caught for first down by Finley across midfield at the 47-yard line of the Cougars. And there you saw the quintessential Dennis Dixon play. A quick rollout, very athletic. He's got a great release, a real sense of urgency in the way he plays quarterback. He's got live legs, and he's going to run all over this field. He's going to play a couple series, and then we're going to see Brady Lee 
Dixon was playing, though, when Kellen Clements was starting. Bellotti would put him in for a series or two in every game. Mike Bellotti still thinks he's going to be a very special player. Kind of learning on the job here, though. Given an inside handoff to Whitehead, and Whitehead bounces it outside. Gets to about the 43-yard line. Dixon, and you mentioned this, P, earlier, that 192 pounds, he's probably really not that big. Mike Pilate feels he could probably easily carry another 20 and not lose much speed. Yeah, he got hit in a Pac-10 game pretty good against Cal, and after that, he was impelled to go see a nutritionist by himself on his own to learn how to gain some weight. It's easy to gain weight. All you got to do is suck back raw eggs. <laughs> Feed me. Yeah, like Rocky. Second down six. That's what I do. And you're absolutely fit. <laughs> it's great back. Dixon again throws. Little clear on. Caught by Finley. First down at the 33-yard line. They talk about the release of Dixon as being one of his great assets. And you saw it right there. Just a quick drop. This spread offense involves a lot of wide receiver play. You see the mechanics getting the ball in the shotgun, stepping into the throw. A little unorthodox, but a very quick release. An exciting player Dennis Dixon is. And he will take off, and he can beat you on a busted play. 4-3 speed. This time Coleman comes in motion. And again on an inside handoff to Whitehead, and Whitehead gets it ahead for about five or six before Braidwood makes the stop. New offense at Oregon this year. They've spread it out a lot more, and it's been very effective. Yeah, and one thing you notice about this offense, Barry, is they play faster. Under Gary Croton, they play faster. They get to the line of scrimmage. They attack the defense in a faster manner. In the run game, in the pass game, they use the shotgun. They get in out of the huddle. I like them. They're exciting. And I like Oregon in these all whites. They look good. Yeah, good looking uniform. Better than those highlighter units. <laughs> Straight ahead, wide head again. He's going to be close to a first down, about a half yard short. Will Dirty sticks his nose in there, makes his first stop since coming back. And the people of the Palouse love to see Will Dirty. Now he's coming out of the game. And the freshman, Greg Trent, is entering. He's been spelling Will Dirty. And he's had his struggles, but he's also played very well. Will Dirty, just a great guy to be around. A very thoughtful young man. A guy that really loves football. And I visited with him at Pac-10 Media Day. He was so excited about this season, about playing with these other linebackers. It's a shame he lost a lot of them. Yeah, it really is family very involved in the Washington State program here. Here's the option again. Dixon on a keeper this time. will have the first down at the 20-yard line. Greg Trent makes the tackle. We talked about the offensive line of the Oregon Ducks, and it is a big offensive line, but more importantly, Pete, a young offensive line. Six redshirt freshmen on the two deep on this O-line. That is a lot of young talent. And you look at Oregon in the future with these young quarterbacks, all these different receivers, all these different guys getting involved, young running backs. Jonathan Stewart's going to be pretty good before it's all said and done in his career. They are going to be a force in the Pac-10 for years to come if they can keep Gary Croton and keep that spread offense moving. No question about that. Dixon again out of the gun. They run everything out of the gun. Throws this time for the end zone. A little miscommunication, I think. Trent putting a pretty good push on Dixon, but I think uh, a little confusion as to the route there. And that was nice pressure by Greg Trent, just a freshman out of Keller, Texas. Really big shoes to fill when Will Durning went out, and he was all over Dixon on that play. Very fast, very productive, very young linebacker. So the first misfire from the Ducks. They come this time with a trips left formation. Whitehead, the lone setback. They'll give you a lot of different personnel groupings. Give to Whitehead. Whitehead with some room. Gets it going in the right direction inside the five-yard line, down to the four-yard line. And there again, they spread the field. Big gaps. Running, running backs, I would have to think, just love this offense. I really like Whitehead. I've always enjoyed watching him. Now, he's not Ontario Smith. He's not Ruben Drones. He's not Maurice Morris. Maybe he's not as good as some of the guys they've had in the past, but he is efficient. He's productive. He's solid. And most importantly, he's durable. He lines up outside. He catches the ball. Just a very good all-around Pac-10 back, and he always puts up numbers. 
Ball at the four-yard line, first down and goal. An impressive first drive for the Ducks. Dixon, fumble. Ball's loose, Coons have it. Handoff is never complete, and Crystal Bruce makes the stop, or rather recovers the fumble, and that play never had a chance. Very strange, a miscommunication. Dennis Dixon, still a young quarterback, trying to take the ball out of Whitehead's hands. Whitehead never expected to have the ball. He was faking the whole time, and Dixon just put it too far in there. Couldn't pull it out. Really trying to sell the fake was Dixon, and you see Bellotti talking to him on the sideline. An unfortunate play for Oregon because Dixon was really moving his offense with an efficient drive. He didn't want to come out for Brady Lee. Real opportunity. Bellotti will give him attaboys. That's the way he will work with that young quarterback. Here's a pitch this time to Harrison. Harrison on his first try will be stopped after a game of about two. Let's take a look at Washington State offensively. Alex Brink has been the quarterback all year. Another guy that's learning on the job. And, of course, he was raised right in the shadow of Eugene, uh, of the University of Oregon. And, in fact, Mike Bellotti's son and his son played high school football together. Jerome Harrison, we've talked about him. Jason Hill, one of the best receivers in the Pac-10 conference. The offensive line, they're a little nicked up also. But, again, historically, a good offensive line at Washington State. Brink this time rolls out, will throw, has time. Now he runs out of time. And is grabbed and thrown down by Matt Toyina. Defensively for the Oregon Ducks. And we talked about this defensive line. Jim Watson talked about Aloti Nata. Toyina just made that sack. Linebacking core, very talented as well. Patrick Chung and Anthony Trucks really uh, essentially a four linebacker system you'll see trucks coming on blitzes a lot and chung as well corners both good cover guys for oregon third down 11. four-man rush and a swing pass for harrison harrison at the 10 cannot get out of the grasp that time of justin finnessy and the coons will have to give it up that's a good job by the Oregon defense. Washington State really took some momentum, not really forcing that turnover, but taking advantage of the opportunity. They get their offense out there. Jason Hill, one of the best in the country. Jerome Harrison, one of the best in the country. They go three and out. Here comes Oregon again. I think we'll see Dennis Dixon once again at quarterback. So Bossler will do the kicking, and Finnessy will be the deep man for Oregon, standing right at midfield. Twisting, fairly short kick and a fair catch by Finnessy at the 48-yard line of the Washington State Cougars. So, again, Oregon will have good field position when we come back. Scoreless game, 9-13 remaining first quarter. Three to nothing ball game, Oregon over Washington State. Coops driving but looking at a third down and long. 342 left in the first period. Been a lot of offense, not a lot of points scored. Six defensive backs for Oregon State. They were blitz out of this formation quite a lot. They don't, they come with a four-man rush. Now they blitz and Brick steps up. Can't shake anybody though, and he's dropped back at the 23-yard line. Anthony Trucks. On a delayed blitz that time. Anthony Trucks, number 84, you see him right there in the middle. He plays a linebacker position. They list him at strong safety, but he lives in the backfield. Ten sacks and a blitz guy. Very good player, Anthony Trucks, and one of the big surprises of this year for Oregon, become one of the better defenders in the Pac-10. So a 40-yard field goal attempt by Lauren Langley to try to tie this game. He's got it on the way, and it is no good. So the Cougars come up empty after a pretty efficient drive, and Langley missing a 40-yarder will jump off the track. Two minutes, 50 seconds for him to be played here in the first quarter. It's a 3 to nothing ball game, Oregon. P 
face, and then we'll see. Leaf, very poised. Hit as he throws, gets it away to the tight end, Day, and Day will have a first down at the 40-yard line. And we say poised right as he takes a shot and still delivers the ball. Yeah, just when you say it, the guy shows some. Brady Leaf, a poised guy, not as good of an arm as Dennis Dixon. Obviously, his brother, Ryan Leaf, a legend here in the Palouse, not to mention his cousin, Matt Cagle, who also played. There's Ryan Leaf enjoying watching his brother play, represent the Cougs, despite his brother out there wearing the Ducks color. We saw him last night. We said, where are you going to stand? He said, I'll be in the end zone, <laughs> right in the middle. Rocking that Coug gear, though. Look out. Leaf is hit, fumbles the ball, and it is fallen on by Max Unger. And I mean, Leaf took a shot from M. Christo Bruce. Bounces right up, though. That's part of having poise. Here comes M. Christo, one of the best sackers in the Pac-10, if not the best. Comes off the line of scrimmage faster than anybody in the league. Knows how to rake that ball free. Leaf never saw it coming. And that's part of standing there and watching the game, you know, for a couple series. You get in there, you're a little cold. You might not have those instincts that you would have had had you started the game. That's part of switching quarterbacks, one of the detriments. Come this time with a double slot. Leaf will go up again under pressure. Throws behind Garen Strong, his intended receiver. So a quick couple of uh, you know uh, how do you play that go astray sorry how do you wear that Washington State gear and then watch some big dude put one right in the middle of your brother's back that's got to be hard it is he told us that last night we sat and talked to him for a while last night incidentally this is a guy has matured unbelievably uh, I suppose there are those who say too late but it's really nice to visit with Ryan Leaf last night we were talking to him several times when he was here and all of a sudden He's a grown-up, and he acts like a grown-up. Played against him in 97. I know he did. Look out. Leaf is going to be sacked again. And again, it was M. Christo Bruce with help from Aaron Johnson. So a very tough debut here tonight for Brady Leaf. M. Christo Bruce. Look at him. Ooh, what a spin move on Max Unger, the redshirt freshman. And he is a relentless pass rusher. And it just goes to show, Washington State, I mean, they haven't won a Pac-10 game. These guys are out there playing hard and playing for each other and not stopping. You have to really credit Bill Doe, but this team has a lot of fight left in it. Cooks made a pretty good run at that kick. It's a short kick. Coming up and making a fair catch is Trent and Harvey at the 43-yard line. We'll take a game break. Back to our Kyocera Studios and Mike Goldberg. Mike? Hey, a good one between the hedges, Barry. Number 9, Georgia. Number 17, Auburn. Dogs lead by 6 here, 27-21. Little pass into the flat to Brandon Sutherland, but he coughs up the football. Auburn takes it, goes in for the score. Under 8 minutes remaining, and the Tigers lead 28-27. Good ball game going on there. Today in the Pac-10, USC 35 to 10, a winner over California. A game that was never really in doubt. Give this time to Harrison. Straight ahead, nothing doing. So Harrison struggling mightily early in this game. Harrison now six carries for a total of two yards. And that was a great job by Matt Toina, the defensive tackle, very strong. Not really letting that Washington State offensive line get any kind of push. Penetration really hurts this Washington State run game because if these defensive linemen for Oregon, who are very large, can stay put, Harrison doesn't have the vertical run lanes that he likes to really get going through. Here comes the blitz. Brink has to unload, does so, caught by Harvey. First down inside the 40 and out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. Well executed by Alex Brink. They were coming that time, and Brink unloaded the ball in a hurry to an open Harvey. Alex Brink on the quick drop, knows he has to get rid of it, gets it to Harvey. Harvey already a couple catches in this game, looking good. Last week, six receptions, 92 yards versus ASU. He's really starting to step up in the absence of Michael Bumpus and Brandon Gibson. Justin Finnessy on the coverage there. Yeah, Gibson is out, Bumpus is out. So the receiving core 
of the Washington State Cougars, thin to say the least. Give it to Harrison again. Harrison, no place to go. They wrap him up and drop him for a loss of three yards. Devin Long, first man to him, and he had plenty of help. They are just not allowing Jerome Harrison to get started. They, interestingly enough, Harrison needs 88 yards to break Ruben May's record here at Washington State. And Mike Pilate used that as ammunition, told his team, we're not going to let him get 88 yards, not against us. His team leads it three to nothing. End of the first quarter. Steps up and now throws underneath, and it's caught by Benneman. Benneman will get about three yards on it. Justin Finnessy makes the stop, and it'll be third down and 10. Well, so far in this football game, the Cougs just have not been able to do anything against the Oregon defense to loosen them up. You see Finnessy limping off the field. Rodney Woods is going to come in at the cornerback position. Finnessy is a key member of this Oregon team, plays all the special teams, returns punts, and of course is a very good cover corner, so should he not be able to come back, that would be a sizable loss for the Ducks. Ah, it's just cold. Yeah, he looks to be okay. Bang something, it's cold, it hurts, you limp off, you jog back on. Easy, Hopefully. Easy for you to say. <laughs> Well, you got a nice heater in here. Yeah, that's right. It's not Beautiful. bad here, is it? Times have changed in the booth. Third and ten. Ducks showing blitz here. They're back out of the blitz. Brink steps up, throws, and it's dropped that time by Harvey. He's going to be well short of the first down anyhow. Washington State has really struggled now offensively in this football game they haven't been able to get jerome harrison going seven carries for negative two yards thus far trying to break records tonight he's not going to do it like that now they have to punt they're in a tough position and you're right finishes right back out there now <laughs> told you thought they'll get a chance to return this punt but he's standing at about the 11 yard line Bossler drives this one and it will land at about the five and be knocked down and that's going to be at about the three yard line well done that time by the cougars right now let's take it out of the sidelines jim watson has a very special guest Waddy. yeah it's a very tough night for this guy of course he's got the split loyalties this is ryan leaf your brother's taking some early shots out there yeah but well he's going against the cougars so yeah it's going to be tough on him out there you know you and i talked about this before this guy is super poised it's because he's been around the game a long time he was on your hip after every game here yeah he well like I said before, he's got every one of my good qualities and none of my bad ones. So let's talk about what you're up to these days. I know you spend a lot of time at your ranch in Montana. Yeah, I go home a lot and spend it with my family and and uh, spend a lot of time in the outdoors. But it's always fun coming back here and especially getting to see the Cougars and my brother brother play. Thanks for the time. Good to see you. Um, thanks. Back in '97, Barry, remember he took all these people down to California for a thing called the Rose Bowl. I do remember that, as a matter of fact. And his brother's got to start at the three-yard line here. Ryan Leaf really was a big-time college quarterback. And, of course, there was that great debate. Will he be drafted before Manning or not? Yeah, I played against him. He used to have that crazy mushroom head, side-of-the-head shaved haircut when I played against him. And he had a lot of receivers to throw it to, and he could back up and dole it out like nobody's business in the back 10 Put up a lot of numbers, and... You know, you hear a lot of things about Ryan Leaf, especially in Southern California, but up here in the Palouse, he can do no wrong. They and, love him up here. And, you know, again, talking to him last night, he was talking about the fact that he's a small-town guy. You know, he just was not comfortable living in the big city. I'm not making excuses for him. But he's, he's a happy guy right now. Quit the NFL for peace and quiet. He's got that earring. He looks good. Goes bear hunting with a bow and arrow. That's my kind of guy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You know me better than that, right? 
I, I like those bears that have that, you know, the electric light at those in those shooting galleries. Where they go, Whoa! You know, when they yeah, the Knott's Berry Farm. Bear. Exactly. Those are the only bears. That have. Well, Brady Leaf has not really gotten this Oregon offense going since he's been in. The Washington State defense has stepped up. They've really put a lot of pressure on him. They've stopped the run game, and now Oregon's going to have to punt to Washington State. But the Cougs' offense has yet to get it going in this football game. You can see Haladi Nada, Haladi Nada lines up at right angles and then he will step forward. And a line drive kick, long kick. Harvey might have a chance at the 35 yard line. Starts back, gets the sideline. 40 45, good field, 45 40. Cuts it back and is knocked out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Nada runs him out of bounds. Well, on senior night, when your offense is struggling, you have to depend on your special teams and your defense. And right now, the Washington State Cougars defense and special teams are stepping up. Let's see if Harrison can get on track. Long before my football days, I got teased at school. Rick, play fake, will throw. Has to roll away from pressure now. Throws underneath and a good job to come back to the ball by Hill. He's short of the first down, but that's a good receiver right there. That's a great receiver right there. I mean, the guy just does what he's got to do to get open. When he first started out and really started putting up numbers a year ago, he was really a deep threat, and he's kind of expanded his game this year, running outs, getting on the sideline tiptoeing, running drive routes. He's a tough guy and really came up as a special teams player before he was a great receiver here at Washington State. Always talk about his work ethic. Here's Harrison. This time he gets a gap at the 20, 15, to the 10, to the 5. Walks in. Touchdown. And a flag is down back at the 13-yard line. Cougars have already had a touchdown called back, and guess what? This one's coming back as well. Heartbreak on senior night for Jerome Harrison. Finally getting it going. Well, a penalty against the Cougs, and a costly one to be sure. Holding offense, number 83, penalty 10 yards, spot of the foul. Enough yard. First down. Nonetheless, a first down, but not the touchdown. Check out senior Norvell Holmes pulling around number 76 right there. That's the block of the year that's never going to count. Look at him trucking. Trucks. Oof. Too that's, bad. Wonderful block. That's what you call your pancake block right there. First down at the 23 yard line, and this time, Benjamin. Leaving a little bit prematurely. Well, the Cougs right now, their own worst enemies. Two touchdowns called back. Dead ball. False start. Now they're going to back 76 up five offense. yards and start with the first. Five yards and remains. And this has down. been the story of their season. Great potential. Great expectations. Great skill positions. You saw the offensive line pulling around. The running backs putting up more numbers than everybody in the country aside from one guy. And still, penalties, things get called back, something goes wrong in the fourth quarter. Washington State this year, snake bit. No other way to put it. They've had double digit leads in the fourth quarter and three of their losses. Draw play this time. Harrison right up the gut. Nice cut at the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown all over again. Doesn't work once, try it again. And a flag in the end zone, that's going to be for excessive celebration, I believe. I think it's going to be a late hit on Rodney Woods who dragged him down deep into the end zone. That will be assessed on the kickoff. Check it out. Just a draw play. Jerome Harrison, you see how he really is patient, Barry. You talked about that. Gets right behind Norvell Holmes. Nick Milhauser with a wonderful block. Starts that shifty moving when he's going upfield like we talked about and takes it into the zone. And Rodney Woods, unnecessary, drags him down way deep into the end zone. 
Well, I guess Harrison's on track. Yeah, well, that one thing got him going. He got upset. They called that penalty, the holding call on him. A beautiful block by Norvell Holmes sprung him the first time. This time, the whole offensive line pulls around. They run a very nice draw, executed well. Once he gets going forward, he's very difficult to stop. Excessive celebration, Barry. What do I know? No, I'm just saying, you gotta let the kids celebrate. No, absolutely. Don't be like the priest in that movie Footloose that kept the kids down. Remember that guy? I Wouldn't do. let him dance. Absolutely. You gotta let the kids dance. You gotta dance. You gotta let Kevin Bacon dance around. Try for point. Longley is up and good. And it is a 7-3 ball game. The Cougars scoring the first touchdown of the ball game. 11-35 remaining in the first half. And Washington State with its first lead. Someday he'll call her and she will come running and fall in his arms and the tears will fall down and she'll pray I want to fall at ChristianMingle.com, you can join the largest, fastest growing community of Christians. The middle, Lorenzo Bursi. And he will be stopped as he crosses the 25 at about the 26 yard line. I think USC will be the national champions. Do you? Yeah, I know that comes as a surprise, doesn't it? Well, we're Pac 10 guys at USC. Is the tops in the Pac-10? This Oregon team, their only loss coming to the Trojans. They really have the second level of the Pac-10's BCS hopes riding on them. No, that's absolutely right. And we said earlier, Mike Bellotti knew that he had a good team, but he didn't really expect this team to be as effective as it's been. They just like each other. Yeah. Slant, and it's incomplete. A little behind Jason Hill. Thought that he had it. Couldn't hang on. Let's take a look at the Pac-10 standings as they are right now. USC, of course, perfect. UCLA having uh, won tonight against Arizona State. Not an easy win for them. And Oregon right there with the one loss to USC. Stanford wins today. Beats Oregon State 4-3 and three in the conference. How do you like that? And still bowl eligible should they be able to beat Cal in the big game? I don't know what's a bigger shock. Stanford being as good as they are or Washington State, this team being winless. That surprises me, and of course, they have all kinds of excuses. They have been ahead in every game. We mentioned earlier they were ahead double digits three times in the fourth quarter in conference games. Lost them all. Just have not been able to make the big play when they really needed. Plus, they've really been hit by the injury bug, too. Well, you were talking about Murphy's Law, everything that can't go wrong, Will. Who's Murphy? I don't know who he was. I should know that, shouldn't I? It's been a real downer to be around. <laughs> uh oh, here comes Murphy. <laughs> Act like you're doing something. <laughs> exactly. Keep your head down. Brick throws, Hill catches. Hill still on his feet, flagged down. And so is Hill at the 42 yard line. Now we got to see about the flag. Jason Hill, similar route. Dropped the ball and was boloed by A.J. Tuatelli earlier in this drive. That time, gets the ball. Tuatelli misses That's the tackle, but it's offense. all coming back. Number 83. Like Offensive pass interference against block. Jason Hill. Repeat third down. So the Cougs really being nailed by penalties here. Two touchdowns called back. This big play called back. I guess it was that little push off on the shoulder that time of Aaron Gibson, I don't know. I don't like that call at all. There's gonna be some contact. Jason Hill's a big receiver, 6'2", 208 pounds. Gibson's all over him, only 175 pounds. And he just put his hand on his shoulder and got his hands up to catch the ball when the ball came. And it looks like he hit his wrist or hand or yeah, something. Yeah, it does. They can absolutely not afford to lose Jason Hill. Washington State is going to call a timeout here. It'll be the Cougs' second timeout. They'll have one remaining in the half here. They would dearly like to get Jason Hill back. And you can see maybe dislocated a finger. It's hard to tell. Washington State's touchdown coming 
on this run right here by Jerome Harrison. He just knows how to set up his offensive lineman, knows how to go upfield when those legs get going. He's tough to break down, just a joy to watch. And even on his first run in this possession for the Cougs, you can tell that Jerome Harrison has really got his mojo working. He's going forward, he's running the football. I think he's gonna break that record tonight. He's gonna surpass Ruben Mays. He's gonna get those 13 straight 100-yard games and beat the Pac-10 record. And they'll keep feeding him the ball. There's no question about it. It's senior night here at Martin Stadium. Absolutely, he's trying to make a statement. Let's take a look at uh, our AFLAC trivia question. And it does regard Jerome Harrison. He has 200 plus rush yards in three games this year. Who holds the Pac-10 record for rush yards in one game? It ain't me. I think I know that. Really? I think so. Steve Broussard. I think Ruben Mays. Really? I think so. Yeah, three know. 320 something. Don't give it away. Why not? It's a guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but a man like you, with your vast knowledge. Many, many people would say half vast. Guesses can be dangerous. Brink straight back. Now he steps up, buys time, throws. It's caught this time for a first down. On the receiving end of that, Greg Prater. Prater, a senior who's not played a lot of minutes, was being called on by Mike Levenseller because they are just that thin. Prater just running a straight in, keeps on coming against the man coverage. Nice play and really nice maturity and nice feel in the pocket by Alex Brink. You watch this guy and you say, you know, he's a pretty good quarterback. At the same time, they're winless in the Pac-10. I he's, can't believe it. He's a sophomore who wanted nothing more than to go to Oregon, play fake, Brink will throw. Does for Harrison. Harrison surrounded and down. No Pass game on the play. Patrick Chung making sure of that. Chung, a redshirt freshman who has stepped up big. Well, he's gained a lot of weight. He's only 197 pounds right now. He gained 20 pounds in the offseason. Only a buck 77 his freshman year. He had to redshirt. You can't play rover or linebacker or any position at a buck 77 if you're going to be in the box. And Oregon plays a lot of guys in the box. Well, he's gained weight this year. He's second on the team, 63 tackles. Forced to fumble, got a couple picks. Born in Kingston, Jamaica. How like many football that, players can say that? Jamaica. I like that. Give to Harrison. Harrison not get outside again. Nice job defensively by J.D. Nelson. You remember his dad. Oh, yes. Son of Darren Nelson. The great Stanford running back in the Minnesota Vikings. Just a gap play, Harrison, with those shoulders turned to the sideline, he's not gonna get positive yardage. He's a guy that has to be going upfield. Third down and nine. And Hill is back in the ball game. Brink straight back, now he's gonna roll away from pressure, flag is down. Pass is caught by Jordan for first down, but let's see, it's probably going to come back. Discussion going on here between the umpire and the referee. Probably going to be holding on that Cougar offensive line. I would think. If it is, it'll be the sixth penalty of this first half against Washington State. And they have been very costly. Two touchdowns called back. They'll lose a first down here. They lost a first down just a little while ago. Chop block, offense, number 66. Chop penalty block. 15 we, yards. We have not seen that. Repeat third down. Year. Nick Milhauser, the center. Here's it going to be at the top of your screen. There's Milhauser. Ooh, that is a chop block. Yes, it is. Nice call. That'll back the Cougs all the way up to the back to their own 24-yard line. And now it's going to be third down and 24.
screen this time for Hill. Cannot step out of the tackle of Patrick Chubb. Very sure tackling by these Oregon Ducks. And the Cougs will have to give it back to Oregon. We're going to take a timeout. Oregon is going to call the timeout with two minutes and 22 seconds remaining. That is their first timeout of the half. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by the Slider Remix with MP3 player from Kyocera. The power of music everywhere you take your phone. And brought to you in part by the United States Marine Corps. By KFC's $4 meals, all the quality of a casual dining meal at half the price. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. And we welcome you back to Pullman, Washington. Actually, a very pretty night. It's cool out there. Toasty warm up here. I can't speak for Jim Watson. It's nice. We have the heater. Thanks to our broadcasting colleague that went here to Washington State. Keith Jackson. Who doesn't love him? Everybody. Oh, you gotta yeah, love happy, Yeah, Keith Mom. Uh, happy birthday, Mom. I love you. Dad, I love you. Everybody. Mama, I love you. I love you. I love you. Hey. It's cold. We're gonna pull it off. No way. No way. Right. <laughs> now, Oregon's gonna be coming back on offense, and you have to wonder, after Dennis Dixon let him down on that last touchdown drive, has he done enough to stay in the game? Or are we going to see Ryan Lee's brother, Brady Leaf, again? He's moved the team pretty consistently when he's been in there. Bossler this time, line drive kick. Finnessy lets it bounce, and uh, it will take a Cougar roll and be out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. And with that, we'll take you back once more for a Kiyosara game break with Mike Over. Goldie? Well, you know what, guys? Tommy Bowden has lost his Christmas present from Papa Bobby because for the second time in three years, Tommy beats Papa Bobby. And a little trickery for Clemson. They beat number 16, Florida State, 35-14. And congratulations to Ty Willingham. He gets his first Pac-10 victory at Washington, snapping a 14-game Pac-10 losing streak. James Sims with 200 yards. Some notable coaching marks. Bobby Bowden. And, of course, Ty Willingham, another one of the good guys in the game of college football. Very glad for him getting a conference win against the team that we thought was one of the hotter teams in the conference. They looked it, but still very young. Pitch this time is to Whitehead, and Whitehead will not get much. He'll be dropped short of the 30-yard line by M. Christo Bruce. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day because, well, we've talked about what it's all about. It's all about the up. Dixon the throw. Through behind his intended receiver, Demetrius Williams, who didn't look for the ball. And that stops the clock with 142 remaining. Ducks still with two timeouts. Cougars have one. Little miscommunication there between Dennis Dixon and his receiver, Demetrius Williams. Dixon looking to the sideline, putting it himself, saying, that's my fault. That's going to happen when you have a young quarterback. He's just a sophomore. Brady Leaf, also a sophomore. But Dennis Dixon actually three years older than Brady Leaf because he Brazier. Then Redshirt. Then he played a year. Now we're going to get a timeout call. I'm sure Mike Bellotti would rather not have burned that timeout that way. But again, he's got a young quarterback. and. By his own admission, he just has to be a little bit more patient than he would be were Kellen Clemens running the show. Clemens, incidentally, is on the sideline and uh, has been working as a graduate assistant. Well, the poor guy gets hurt in his senior year. No red shirt for him. No chance to come back and play. The season's just over, and you always hate to see that. That's part of football. Well, coming up at halftime, we're going to go back to our Kiyosara studio and... Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith are going to tell you why USC won't win the national championship. I I'd can't like wait. I want to hear that. I, I want, want to hear it. Also, I have all the highlights, everything that happened in college football today. We've got a very close game here. It's a 10 to 7 ball game. Offense pretty even. Cougs with 164 yards of offense right now. Ducks with 154. Do you think they're just trying to be sensationalistic? 
Just yeah. trying to get people to tune in for the halftime show. That's wake part of up. it. You know, wake them up. I'm sure they have good reasons. And Texas is very good. But who's going to stop USC's offense? You have to wonder. I do think Texas is very good. Can they beat USC? I don't think so. Can the Fresno State Bulldogs beat USC? I think we'll have some fun next week. They're punching in the mouth. No question about that. You know that. Remember, they played the Oregon Ducks in Eugene. As Dixon now will bail out of there and be down as he crosses the 30-yard line. And now Bill Dove is going to ask for a timeout. Ran right out and got in the face of the linesman. <laughs> Always a very animated sideline for the Washington State Cougars. And the Cougs defense has stepped up big. They've had some penalties and some things not go their way, but holding this Oregon offense to only 10 points. I know they have a young quarterback, but they have a lot of weapons in the receiving core. The quarterback is very physical, very fast. And the other guy's very poised in Brady Leaf. We're gonna see them both, and they might get it together in the second half. But you have to like the way this Cougar defense has played in the first half. They've been strong and very active, and they've been hitting hard. Absolutely. Just to finish that thought, Fresno State played at Eugene earlier this year. Jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead on the Oregon Ducks, only to lose it by three down the stretch. So Fresno State, formidable, has won everything since then. And that guy there, you see him right there, Kella Clements. He was the guy that led him back in that game to beat Fresno State. You see him there on the crutches talking to Dennis Dixon. And he's out there. He's coaching. He's got the gear on. He's even got the eye black on. Well, I got to like that. A lot of glare here at night? Or? Yeah, I think that's it. So the Ducks will put it away. Harvey will be the deep man. Good kick this time. Drives Harvey all the way back to about the 13 yard line. And all he can do is fall on it way back at the 10. A great punt that time. Here's Harvey. Has to back, back up to catch it. And it doesn't really do it. Kind of muffs it. And all he can do is fall on it. And makes a 90 yard field with a minute and 26 seconds. And no timeouts for the Cougars. So you would have to think that they will uh, be pretty conservative here. Well, the Cougs really know how to stretch the field, though, and they might be able to do it. They haven't done it much in this football game thus far. Oregon very cognizant to the fact that the Cougs can go deep in a hurry, especially with Jason Hill out there. Let's see if they can do it right now. Here's a drop play. Harrison trying to get to the outside. Bounces off his own man, gets it up to about the 18-yard line. Pickup of about eight yards, 115 remaining to be played. Cougs will try to hurry the line of scrimmage, get a first down if they can, and then see what comes next. Now we get a stoppage as Halote Nada is a little bit slow to get up. Oh, he's big. That is a big guy. You can sell space on that body. Well, the word on the street is that he blocked a kick in their spring football game with his gut. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's pretty big. Well, he's blocked a couple kicks this year. He he's has. got a safety. But actually, with the stomach, blocked the kick. In fact, they never found the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you can see seven career block kicks. He seems to be okay. He's a large fellow. Brink going to go up. Looking deep this time. Looking for Hill, jump ball, and Hill couldn't quite contain it. Gibson defending and doing a very good job of it. Hill had his hands on the ball, couldn't quite corral it. And in the last couple series, the Oregon defensive backs and Rovers have frustrated Jason Hill. Pretty good defense by Gibson. Hill just not able to come up with it. We've seen him make that catch a hundred times. Yeah. This is a prevent defense Oregon is running, but that was one on one. So it's third down and two with 58 seconds remaining. They make it a freebie here. Flag is down, and Harrison will have the first down at the 30 yard line. And I think that was Oregon jumping offside. 
And it was. So they'll take the play and hurry to the line of scrimmage. 50 seconds, and really in college football, that could be an eternity. Offsides, defense, and penalties decline. Harrison now with 52 yards rushing in the first half. And he hasn't run his legs off, you know? I mean, we've seen him run himself out of a game and get so tired in the fourth quarter that he doesn't have it anymore. Brink, short drop, throws for Hill. Threw the ball a little bit early. Hill was just coming out of his break. Brink trying to manage this game right now. 43 seconds. He wants to at least get a field goal try for his squad, but he's got to get the ball to Jason Hill and get down the field. Not having Bumpus out there and not having Brandon Gibson, the other two receivers, really hurts this Cougar offense. Harrison actually was 63 yards, and here he is again. Gets outside, now he cuts it up, takes it to the outside, gets some room, and he's out of bounds. Short of midfield at the 48-yard line. That's going to get him very close to the all-time record here of Ruben Mays, and he's five yards short of it. He has 82 now on the day. So patient, so shifty, such ability to see the field, really sees a lot of the field, great peripheral vision, and sets up tacklers very well. Brink straight back. Underneath this time, Jordan makes the catch of the ball thrown behind him. Now they've got to hurry to the line of scrimmage and likely spike the ball here. 23 seconds remaining. Brink will get under center. They may actually run a play here rather than spike it. They will. It's a pitch to Harrison. Harrison gets it outside. First down and more. And that's going to give him the record right there. And he stops the clock. And I think they will also stop play here for a moment to recognize uh, Harrison's mark here, the all-time leading rusher at Washington State. And then again, they may not. They were going to, but I think because of the fact that the first half is ticking down, they are likely not going to do that. 1,639 yards this season for Harrison. Breaks the record of Ruben Mays by two yards. Brink going to throw. Steps up, throws. And Hill can't hang on to that one either, although Brink threw it in the only place he could. Still not really in field goal range. They need probably another 10 yards. And even though that was incomplete, you have to like Mike Levenseller's management of the game right now with his young quarterback, Alex Brink. They moved the ball well here. They had a long way to go. There's offensive coordinator Levenseller right there. They've run the ball efficiently. You don't see that a lot when teams don't have a lot of time on the clock. They've gotten it to Harrison. And now they just need, like you said, about 10 more yards to get a field goal track. Brink straight back. Swing pass for Harrison. And Harrison will not get those 10 yards. It's at right at where it was at about the 39, maybe the 38 yard line. It's about a 56 yard field goal from here. And I suppose you may as well let him try it. Or the Hail Mary. Yeah, which appears to be what they're thinking. So Oregon will back everybody up deep here. And Brink will try to reach the end zone, which I'm quite sure he can. Oh, bounce out of there, buy some time. Just throw it as far as he can. And it gets to the end zone and the jump ball. And Hill has it. Touchdown, Cougars. Every now and then, it works. It was a nice throw. Brink bought himself some time. And what can you say? Jason Hill, frustrated in the second quarter, getting down there on Gibson, sets up. Tips the ball to himself. J.D. Nelson also with a hand on it. Just like you said, every once in a while, it comes through. Big play for the Cougs. Oh, huge play. Going in at halftime. Now they'll have the lead. The try for point is up and good. And the Washington State Cougars on a Hail Mary in the 
first half with the lead, 14 to 10. And if that doesn't get a team jacked up, I'm not quite sure what will. Here's another look. Well, we talked about the Cougs being snake bit and being down. Maybe their luck is changing. Not really a Hail Mary type of throw, more of a line drive. Break through it and all those people, and you had a feeling something was going to go down. You saw Jason Hill and Jordan down there in position. The Oregon DBs, not huge guys, and Hill got up and got that rock. 90-yard drive for the Cougs. Saw two of the DBs of the Oregon Ducks run into each other, and I think that just kind of cleared the path. Once the ball got tipped, Hill was right there. Thank you very much. Touchdown and the lead. Woo! What a way to end the first half. And we're going to take you now right back to our Kyocera studio. What a first half for Brink. 14 of 19, 171 yards, and that 40-yard Hail Mary. to Martin Stadium here in Pullman, Washington, where the Washington State Cougars lead the Oregon Ducks 14 to 10. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, and Jimmy Watson. Take a look at the first half scoring. Harrison, 28 yards, and this coming, of course, P, after a 23-yard run, was called back. Second in the NCAA in rushing, first in Pac-10. I love watching that guy. Then you see the young man, Jonathan Stewart, taking it in for Oregon. And then, Hail Mary, the very end of the half. Alex Brink to Jason Hill, and the Cougs got some momentum. Take a look at the numbers. Cougs out rushing and out throwing the Oregon Ducks so far. Only one turnover in the ball game. Penalties have hurt Washington State, but not enough to have them trail in this game. They lead it by four as we prepare to start the second half, and Washington State will have it first. Bercy and Ward will be the deep men to receive this kickoff of Matt Evanson. The second half underway. Sidewinding kick headed for Bercy. About three yards deep. He won't try it. We go to the sidelines. Jim Watson, why do you had a chance to talk to both coaches? I did. First off, I caught up with Bill Doba just outside his office, and he expressed a lot of frustration about the way the officials are treating, in particular, Jason Hill. He said Jason Hill's getting chucked at the line of scrimmage. He's trying to swim move, and the officials are not giving him the freedom that he's entitled to. As far as Mike Bellotti, well, he said, hey, the defense is playing great. We had two breakdowns. The draw to Jerome Harrison for the touchdown, of course, that last play to end the half to Jason Hill. I said, what about your quarterbacks? Dennis Dixon seemed to be getting the better of in the first half. He said, yes, he will get the brunt of the work in the next two quarters. All all right, thanks very much, Waddy. Waddy right on top of it. Beloved by the Pac-10 coaches. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, with good reason. Brick pitch to Harrison. Harrison cut back, got room again. Tried to cut it back to the outside. Will be stopped after a gain of about six yards. Harrison has already become the all-time leading rusher for a season for the Washington State Cougars. He needed 87 yards. He got 89 in the first half, and we're going to have him honored right now as uh, Ruben Mays is on hand, the former record holder, to honor Jerome Harrison. And I can promise you that is not Ruben Mays. That is Bill Dober, the head coach. Jerome Harrison will get the football and the applause of the fans. He's really provided a tremendous story here. I don't think there's any question about it. All-time Washington State rusher. Three more yards. He's going to have his 13th straight 100-yard game. That's a Pac-10 record. Started tonight with seven carries for negative two yards. He's turned that around. Incidentally, we should tell you that Mike Bellotti agreed to this stoppage as the Washington State coaches had asked prior to the game if he does go over the yardage, can we stop and make this presentation? And Mike Bellotti generously said yes. Here's Harrison again. He breaks it. Across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Jerome Harrison, two runs to start the second half. Patrick Chung makes the tackle. 
Jerome Harrison going over 100 yards. That's 13 straight games. That breaks J.J. Arrington's record of last year in the Pac-10. This guy's breaking and setting records all over the place. And he's going upfield and helping his team at the same time. And 112 yards in the ball game now at 17 carries. And remember, as you said, his first seven carries, minus two. Here he is again on the pitch. And again, he gets it to the outside and is run out at about the 48-yard line, but a gain of five. Patrick Chum makes the tackle. Well, when you can run like that, it makes the passing game a lot easier, doesn't it? You know, he's not a big guy, and he looks smaller than his measurements say. He's 5'10", 200, but you just saw the strength of Jerome Harrison on that run. The ball almost raked from his hands, turned his whole body around, but he was able to whip it back and get going forward. He's a back that has to go forward. Some guys that are his size can go side to side very well. Reggie Bush is one of those guys, but Jerome Harrison's strength is going up the field. And he's a horse. He'll carry it 40 times a game. Oh, yeah. Pump fake, break, air, and out, going deep, under, through. There's a tenor receiver. They're going to get a flat, and that's really only because Brink under, through it. Hill had to shorten his route a little bit, and it caused J.D. Nelson to run right up his back. And that is sort of unfortunate for J.D. Nelson because he had good coverage on Hill. The ball was underthrown. Very difficult to defense that. And he just kept his positioning at the hip. Let's watch this. I'm not sure if this was a good call. So he had to slow down, and that... That forced Nelson to run right up his back and no place to go. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a flag there. Well, Nelson comes from good stock. I've had occasion to be around his dad several times. One of the real quality guys still works down at Stanford University in athletic administration. First down now at the 37-yard line. Brink straight back, throws underneath, caught by Harvey. First down at the 26-yard line. Patrick Chung again runs him out. Excellent first drive thus far for the Cougars to start the second half. Well, they ended the first half with that 90-yard drive. Now they may be going 80 to start the second. They're looking pretty good. Brink is throwing the ball accurately. And more importantly, Jerome Harrison has really been running the ball well and going forward. Looks like LaDainian Tomlinson a little bit out there. He does. Those live legs, maybe not as mean with the ball. Ooh, he's mean, LaDainian Tomlinson. This time, Harrison's going to be caught from behind on an excellent defensive play. And a couple of extra words thrown in by Blair Phillips. Blair Phillips is the guy that has contributed right away for Oregon out of the J.C. ranks. Makes that play running through on the backside, getting Jerome Harrison again with his shoulder pads pointed toward the sideline and corralling him down. Don't know if he needed to lean over and yell at him after that, but that's football, and this has been a very hotly contested game. It's been a well-played game. A lot of hit going on. Now let's see if... Oregon was drawn off here. I have an idea they might have been. Might have been Sean O'Connor, the left guard. So that'll back the Cougs up five, take them all the way back to the 34-yard line. And the Cougs have done this to themselves often in the first half of this game and all season. They look good, they got firepower, and then they take steps backwards, and then they have to climb out of those. And they just don't have enough guys to climb out of those again and again. Seven penalties for the Cougars, 80 yards. Brink on a screen to Harrison. Harrison cuts it back. Now he gets the outside of the 20. He's at the 10. He's gone. Touchdown. Wow. I mean, there you really see it. The patience of Jerome Harrison getting behind Bobby Byrd and Sean O'Connor, waiting for his blockers and the screen to develop. Not a lot of people can do this. First, watch him peek the end into thinking he's going to block him. Turn around, wait for his blockers, get in behind him, only hits the sidelines when he knows he has that opening. Now, that takes a lot for a back to do because you get that football, 
It's chaos. It's anarchy. It's a riot on the street. I mean, these guys really have a sense of urgency with the ball. Harrison relaxed, waits, gets to the sideline. Really starting to look like a very special player. Jerome Harrison, his second touchdown, this one on the receiving end of a screen pass, and the Cougs lead by 11. All about Theo. Cedarius kicks this one off, a short kick. Johnson's going to run up, take this to the seven yard line. And it runs away for his block and gets a little gap, however, kicks to the outside at the 30. And we'll get it all the way to about the 37 yard line. Nice return by Jeremiah Johnson. Let's take a look at that touchdown run, Pete. All right, here's Anthony Trucks. Here's Bobby Bird. This is pretty simple. First, the offensive line does a good job of selling the screen. Trucks is on Cody Boyd, comes up to make the play. This is Oregon's best tackler. And look at him get destroyed. And look at Harrison, how he gets right in behind his offensive lineman, waits to the last moment, and then breaks it to the pylon. That is patience, and not a lot of backs have it. LaDainian Tomlinson is a guy that has that kind of patience. Now, Harrison doesn't go full speed like Tomlinson does, but he's got the patience, he's got the moves, he's got the toughness. Brady leaves the quarterback for Oregon on the inside hand off the right edge. Stop for a loss of about two by M. Christo Bruce, who's having a very nice game, oh, by the way. All the Cougs have really come to life tonight, and Oregon is struggling against them. These young quarterbacks, they put some things together, but they haven't done too much, and nobody has really stepped up on the Oregon offense and said, I'm going to take this game over. Demetrius Williams would be that guy if somebody's going to do it, or Brady Leaf start leading this team and make a legend out of himself in his brother's stadium. Leaf this time, a little swing out of the backfield, a wide head, short of the first down at about the 44-yard line. Alex Teams runs him out. Here are the numbers of Dixon and Leaf. Dixon, 71 yards through the air, a touchdown, and a field goal on his four possessions. Brady Leaf was under siege much of the time, 26 passing yards, and was sacked on a couple of occasions. Play here for and third down and five. And Dennis Dixon has gotten a tight end. Tim Day involved. He got him involved in the first half. Let's see if Leaf does the same thing. Leaf steps up, throws behind Day, but Day makes the catch for a first down. <laughs> Scott Davis makes the tackle. Nice catch by Day. Leaf had to go down to get the snap and does throw it right behind Tim Day, but Tim Day, a veteran out of Vegas. They call him Mr. Vegas on his team. Fifth on the team in reception. This time they slot the tight end Day to the near side. And they give him a handoff to Whitehead right up the gut. Whitehead picks up about seven. Greg Trent on the tackle. A little linebacker. Durning has not played yet here in the second half. Played sporadically in the first half. And he made a play on Whitehead on a shovel pass. And there you see Whitehead limping off the field. Jonathan Stewart will be in to replace him. Jeremiah Johnson actually comes on for him. There's Dirting, so he looks just fine. We'll just try to ease him back into game conditions here. Leave straight back, shovel pass this time. Johnson trying to get outside and did a pretty good job of it. He'll have the first down at the 35 yard line of Washington State. Eric Frampton on the taxi. There you see Leaf showing some poise, stepping back there, selling that he's going to go downfield, flipping it to Johnson. Johnson with a nice straight arm on Frampton. Johnson, one of the two outstanding freshman running backs, with us, along with Jonathan Stewart. Out of Dorsey High School, produced a few athletes, huh? Nice book. This time, Lee floats it out for, for Williams, and he can't quite catch up. Passing to number four. Jason Williams. Jason Williams. Well, I think before he's all done, he'll be an impact player at Oregon. Well, it's a shame that Michael Bump City Bumpus is not playing in this game for Washington State because Jason Williams and Michael Bumpus 
in the same class at Culver City High School in Southern California. Good friends, too. They were both going to USC and ended up splitting up. Bumpus to Washington State and Williams to Oregon. Williams already had a pretty big catch today. Second down and 10. Finley goes in motion. Leaf rolls to his right. Steps up. Throws. Caught this time by Colvin. Short of the first down. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. You and I over breakfast this morning. We're talking what it's all about. It's what, all we what ever talk it? about. What is it all? It's all about the O. Leaf has had a good drive here. Good play here, though. Third down. Just about five. Crowd gets involved and now flag. And I think that it was Paolani Masum who moved to Dead soon. ball. Ball start. Offense, 55. Five well, yards remains, third down. It was his neighbor. It was Inoka Lucas. When the center goes off sides, your offense doesn't have much of a chance. No, that's right. On that play. And that happens. You know, that happens when you, you, when you move quarterbacks around. You switch quarterbacks, different cadences, different tendencies. The guy's voice sounds different. They use different colors and different numbers. You know, everybody has their preference. Most of them don't mean anything. Puts everybody a little off kilter. It's us. It's Instead of third and five now, it's third and ten. Leaf steps up, throws, caught by Williams, first down. And that was an excellent ball thrown by Leaf. And that pretty much describes what his coach has talked about as regards his abilities, and that is poise. Brady Leaf showing some poise here, dropping this ball in. Jason Williams in between three guys, two safeties and a linebacker, and Leaf expertly, like a surgeon, Drops that ball in there. He was a captain for this game. Got a lot to live up to in this stadium. Give this time to Stewart. Stewart, or rather, yeah, it is Stewart running laterally and is knocked out of bounds after a gain of about three. And he is a load. He is, and he runs hard. He left Brandon down. Just ran right over Eric Frampton, a strong safety who hits pretty hard for Washington State barreling his way for a pretty nice gain on first down. I like watching this kid run. Yeah, he got nicked up a little bit in the game against Montana, and it sort of hampered his growth a little bit. Now he's back to nearly 100%. You can see it on that last run. Second down, and about five. Leaf straight back, hit as he throws. Had to unload that ball much sooner than he wanted to, and it was Greg Trent who really busted that play up. Leaf threw that into no man's land, and he could have been throwing that away, but also that ball could have very easily been intercepted. A very nice blitz, well-timed by the freshman out of Keller, Texas, Greg Trent. I think he threw that away. This is Leaf's best drive tonight. You have to say the Cougs are up by 11 points right now. Remember, we were here, Barry. They led UCLA by 17 points, and they couldn't close. And right now, it might be slipping away here in the third quarter again with Oregon moving the football. That's been the problem for them. This time, they split Stewart far to the right. Leaves straight back. In trouble. Bounces away. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown. Caught by Finley. And again, Leaf just showing great poise. And he's got a lot of receivers to get the ball to. This time, he gets it to James Finley. Finley never quits on this route, running an arrow route. That doesn't go well, so he improvises and takes it back inside. Leaf finds him, gets him the ball. Leaf to Finley last week in overtime versus Cal is what won that football game. Very similar play, as a matter of fact. So they're going to go for two here, trailing by five. Try to get this within a field goal. Right head back in the ball game as the running back. Williams in motion. Lee throws right, throws underneath, batted away. Good job defensively by Alex Teams. And the score remains 21 to 16. 
Going for two with 25 minutes left to play. And a Pac-10 shootout on our hands. 21 Cougs, 16 Ducks, 9.56 left third quarter. We'll be back. It was the biggest race of the year. And no matter what, I was going to win. Mercy at about the three yard line. Right back up the middle to the 20. And he has stood up as he crosses the 20 yard line. And Washington State will start at the 23. It has been once again the Jerome Harrison show. Watch him taking pitches, taking it to the zone, causing trouble, cutting on people, everybody chasing him around. You gotta love to watch Jerome Harrison run the ball. Got 113 yards rushing and a touchdown. Picked up another 38 and a touchdown in receptions. And he's still got a long way to go. 9.50 left third quarter. Bring the quarterback straight back on first down. Now he has to bounce out of there and will throw it downfield. A lot of bumping going on and no flag intended receiver was Cody Boyd. There was probably more bumping going on in that play than half of the pass interference calls. <laughs> That's true. Anthony Trucks was Affleck. all over. All right, the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the Pac-10 record for most rushing yards in a single game? And the answer is... Aflac! Ruben Mays. Well, there you are. gave it away, see? I didn't give... I didn't know. I was guessing. The kids are going to cry all night because of that. I missed my 30 yards, though. I said 323. <laughs> That's a lot of yards in a game. 357 yeah. yards. Make you pretty tired. Here's Harrison. Harrison again outside. And we'll pick up about five or six yards. You know, he just knows how to go into defenders and create space for himself. The big question right now is, can Wazoo keep it going? It looks like they can after that run. Harrison is hot. Brink is hot, a 90-yard touchdown drive to end the first half, an 80-yard touchdown drive to start the second. Now, the defense broke down and gave up a touchdown, but if their offense can keep it going, they're going to win this football game and upset Oregon. they got to finish the deal. That's what they have not been able to do. They've had opponents on the ropes, have not been able to deal a knockout blow. Brink straight back, throws intercepted. And just like that, Oregon is in business just exactly as we were talking. He threw it right into the hands of Darius Sanders, who's a defensive end, dropping back into coverage. Darius Sanders, a senior, coming up with a big play. There he is right there. Watch him in the zone blitz. Drop into coverage into the flat. Brink never sees him. Tries to get the ball to Hill on the hitch, and Sanders, what a big play. And those are hard balls to intercept. The ones that aren't to you, and there's no air under them, they just throw a bullet. You really got to snatch those out of the sky. You don't expect the defensive end to make that play, but Darius Sanders, great play for his team and his defense. Gives the Ducks the ball at the 35-yard line. They're going to have to burn a timeout here. as the clock was winding down and they were going to be unable to get a playoff so they're going to call their first time out of the second half with 929 remaining they trail by five just had a drive for a touchdown behind the quarterbacking of brady leaf and it'll be leaf who's out there once again the sophomore from great falls interesting thing about brady leaf he has actually seen and will see more games here at martin stadium than he will throughout his career at Autzen stadium oh without question with his brother here and I'm sure he's got a bunch of Washington State gear in his closet that he's had to put away and he can't wear it around town. And it's not just his brother, it's also his cousin, Matt Kegel, that quarterback true. here too. He spent a lot of time here. About 12. Dennis Dixon was supposed to get most of the quarterbacking action for the Ducks in the second half, but Brady Leaf, after leading the last touchdown drive, is getting the nod again, and the momentum has clearly shifted. It wasn't Wazoo's favor. Now with that interception, 
back to the Ducks. They have it at the 23-yard line of the Cougs, trailing by five. Here's a reverse this time to Colvin. Colvin at the 20, 15, 10, he's gone. Touchdown, Oregon. And that was just tremendous execution. Cameron Colvin, a tough kid, and really executed well. A sophisticated reverse with a pitch and a play fake. A pitch man, a faker, and the guy getting the ball all involved on that play. Brady Leaf runs it pretty well. Colvin didn't have much trouble finding a lane and getting it to the end zone. And now the Ducks once again going for two. With the lead right now, 22-21. They'll try to make it a three-point ball game again. Again, they spread the field from number to number. And Leaf on the pitch, and Whitehead, I don't know. Yes, he got there, they say. Remember, the ball just has to cross the plane of the goal. Doesn't matter if the player does. And if it did get across, it barely got across. The official who was there said, yes, it did, and it's a 24 21 Oregon lead and that's a big-time senior play by Terrence Whitehead knowing where he was on the field He's always had very good balance getting down and getting that ball Over the goal line. Here's the touchdown You see that pitch takes a lot of trust and a lot of practice to run a play like that and to flip a pitch like that in a football game Here's the two-point conversion just that wacky option with the option for a shovel pass and Whitehead stopped on the goal line, but able to bustle his way in. That's pretty close. And they may be they're reviewing this one. I, I'm not sure. Let's take a look here, P. What do you think, really? Well, again, Finley, the pitch man. Here's Whitehead. He's got a good lead, and I think that ball's in. Well, that's it's got to be undisputable, and I don't think it's undisputable. I think that ball's in. His shoulders, his hips, all of them going toward the end zone. Yeah, that ball's in. He got it over the line. Yeah, I doubt that this is going to nudge his change. elbow over the line. I think he did. And you're right, a senior play. There's no conclusive video evidence to change the call of the field. Therefore, the try is good. That's the right call, I think. In the third quarter, the Ducks kind of chasing points, going for two-point conversion after two-point conversion. That time it pays off. They get the ball to the senior, and he's able to get through there and fight off some very serious Washington State defenders who were bent on keeping him out of the end zone. So now the Cougs have to have a short memory. They've got to forget about what happened last time. And get the offense in gear once again. you got to think Leaf is going to have the rest of the third quarter to play. They engineered a couple of scores. Here's what Washington State has done, and we were talking about this all day. They were ahead of Oregon State by 14, ahead of UCLA by 17, ahead of Cal by 10, and lost all those games. They were ahead in this ball game, scant moments ago. That just hurts. It hurts this team because they got a lot of proud guys and a lot of seniors and a lot of guys that have played very hard for that man, Bill Doba. But something's happened to them in the fourth quarter. You have to take control of a game and win. And they haven't done that. There's Harrison waiting for something to happen. Now he tries to bounce it outside. A flag comes in. And that, I think, is going to go against Oregon. I think that might be a face mask. I don't know. I don't want to jump to too many conclusions. It is a face mask. Going to be called on Anthony Trucks. Anthony Trucks, the best tackler on the Oregon defense, and Jerome Harrison. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 84, penalty 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Harrison knows better than to make that play, too, to jump away from a tackler like Anthony Trucks and go backwards, negative yardage, but pays off for him that time.
So they'll now have it at the 35 yard line. Brick all the way at quarterback. Straight back, Brick. Batted at the line of scrimmage. And it was Darius Sanders again, who's been an absolute pest here in the second half. And despite the penalty to give him a first down on that last play, the Cougs don't seem to have their rhythm offensively right now. They got to start getting the ball to Harrison again. When you start getting balls batted down, that means your offense is out of sync and your quarterback's out of sync. So it'll be second and 10. Play fake this time and a bootleg and a throw underneath to Boyd will pick up about six yards, but it's going to be third and four. Aaron Gibson puts the stop on Boyd. And a nice tackle by Gibson, considering that Gibson's only 175 pounds. Cody Boyd, 6'8", 255, out of Bellingham, Washington, a junior, big long tight end, and Gibson getting right at his legs and making that tackle solo. So now third down and four, and a big play here. The Cougs do not want to give the ball back to Oregon this quickly. Three-step drop, and the slant incomplete. Again, thrown a little bit behind Jason Hill. Gibson defending, and the Cougs are going to have to give it right back to the Ducks. We talked about Alex Brink being out of sync. Looks off his receiver, comes back to Jason Hill. Throws the ball behind him, should have been a completion. Jason Hill had both hands on it. You gotta blame that on Brink. He's out of sync right now. So's the Washington State team. They've gotta find it again, or another lead is gonna slip away from them. Led by 11 in this quarter, and it wasn't that long ago. Bossler's kick, a good kick. Drives Finnessy all the way back to the 12-yard line. Finnessy stopped just as he gets started at about the 17. Good coverage that time by Courtney Williams on special teams for the Cougs. And it's going to be Dixon and not Leaf as they will continue to alternate two series at a time for each quarterback. We talked about it in the open. Mike Bellotti not afraid to pull the trigger. Brady Leaf has led two scoring drives. He's had the hot hand. And now Dixon is back in. There you see the comparison of the two quarterbacks. Dixon give to Johnson. Johnson is stopped, or Stewart rather, is stopped right at the 20 yard line. He looks to be the whole package. I mean, he is big, strong, and very quick. He's fast. I mean, he's had an 83 yard kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Six touchdowns all the way around. Caught a touchdown pass, very versatile guy. You're right, he can do it all. Quick throw this time to Finley. Finley at the 20, the 25, to about the 28-yard line. Close to a first down, but about a yard short. Scott Davis on the tackle for Washington State. It's going to be third down and less than a yard. And, Barry, this is a huge third down right now for Oregon because Leaf was hot, and Bellotti put Dixon in the game rolling the dice. He's got to get a couple first downs and get some confidence for the offense. They are going to measure this. Got a very generous spot, I think. I still believe it may be a little bit short. It will bring the chains all the way across the field. And it's just that short. Barry, check out Kellen Clemens on the sideline here. Signaling in place to Dixon. He's got to drop those crutches to do it. Though. That's right. <laughs> Still very athletic, balancing on that right leg, signaling in the plays. Well, he was in the midst, I thought, of just an outstanding season. His stock rose dramatically. This offense really wasn't it is designed for quarterback of Kellen Clement's ability. It's also designed for quarterback of Dixon's ability. Dixon is just young and learning on the job here. 
And he's done pretty well. He's organized a couple drives and done some good things, and he's run the ball well, and he's been pretty accurate. 65% completion coming into this game, but this is a big play for him. Third and short. There's the option, the pitch to Stewart. Stewart fumbles the football. Ball is loose. Scramble for it. Cougs have it. Big play. Greg Trent's the guy that made that play. We saw it the first half in a short yardage situation. Oregon thinking they could get the edge on Washington State. They were successful once with Stewart. They tried again. This time it doesn't work. Wally Dada causing the fumble. Greg Trent, the freshman middle linebacker, recovering it. It wasn't the pitch. Stewart was not going to get the first down anyway. He slipped down, used the hand to balance himself, and because of that, he couldn't protect the football. Wally Dada flying in and causing that fumble a big time. Oregon took advantage of a Washington State turnover a few moments ago, and now the Cougars will try to do the same. Pitch to Harrison. Harrison, this time, caught almost as he got started. And a late flag. And that was away from the action. I have no idea what this is about. Could be a personal foul on Cody Boyd, if I know my body language. That's exactly right. And again, that is a costly, costly personal foul. Cost them 15 yards, puts them in a long yardage situation. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, offense, number 80, 15 yards from the end of the run, the down counts, second down. So they lose the down, they lose 15 yards, and it takes about a field goal range. Other than that, though, wasn't that serious? Kills your momentum. And guys get angry out there, and football's a chippy game, and guys are playing hard, and it's combat, but you can't let it get the best of you after the whistle, or you hurt your team. Rick, play fake, will put it up. Look out, down he goes, all the way back near midfield. And again, it was Darius Sanders, who has just come up huge in the second half. He's had an interception, a batted pass, and now that big sack, a crushing blow. He puts to the blind side of Alex Brink. Darius Sanders putting in work here in the Palouse. Now, Cougs are looking at a third and 34. They got to play for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's down at the bottom of that chart that all the coaches carry. What they really need to do is just try to get this down about the 30-yard line if they can hope to kick a field goal tie the game. Straight back, five-step drop. Now Brooks steps up. He'll run. Steps inside. He gets it to the 31. I think this will at least give him an attempt. Patrick Chung makes the stop. I would have to think that uh, they will at least try it here. Check out Brink in the pocket. Now, this is only a 200-pound guy, and he just got destroyed by a defensive end. Showing a lot of heart, showing a lot of will, trying to get his team into field goal range. And they're going to try the field goal, taking that hit head on. You got to like the way Alex Brink is running the team right now. 49 yarder from Langley out of the hole of the punter, Bosler. He drives it and doesn't have enough and hits the crossbar. About as close as you can get and not make it. Would have been a career long. And he got about 48 and a half yards. So the score remains the same, and Oregon will take over at the 32-yard line. Cougs unable to cash in on that break deep in Oregon territory. Look at this. Probably wasn't going to make it, even if it had enough distance. The heartbreak of a kicker. Yep. You know what they listen to when they get home? Man alone. Man alone. <laughs> they so? Yeah. Not Sam Field, the master of the flute. <laughs> Wide open now, and making the grab is Kent, and Kent will score. Jordan Kent. First play of the game that he's in.
and he turns it into a touchdown, and what a backbreaker for the Cougars. Jordan Kent, son of Oregon basketball coach Ernie Kent, a track star, first year playing football, also plays basketball, and he has got a lot of speed, taking it deep, only two receptions on the year. That's his third, and that's the biggest one of his football career. 68 yards on the pass from Dixon, and a heck of a ball from Dixon. Try for point is up and through, and Jordan Kent, first three-sport athlete at Oregon in about 30 years. And he's also a starter for his dad on the Ducks basketball team. And recently, he decided he wanted to play football. He'd never played football before, so he called his dad, who was out recruiting, and he said, would you still love me if I did something you didn't agree with? Jordan was asking his dad, the basketball coach, can I play football? And Ernie said he was so relieved because he thought Jordan meant he was getting married. Plus, uh, <laughs> he thought after the kid got knocked around on the football field, he'd come to his senses and come back to basketball. But now Jordan loves it now. And, well, Ernie got something out of it, too, because now Jordan, NCAA rules, says has to be on a football scholarship. So Ernie's got another free ticket. <laughs> That's a great story. He's really an amazing kid, too. Jordan. Yeah, I've had a chance to spend a little bit of time with him. And, uh... Great athlete. I'll tell you what, he looks like a football player, doesn't he? He does, especially with that stride. I bet Bellotti and Ernie Kent are going to have a talk over coffee Monday morning in the office about that play. That was beautiful. What a stride. Just took it right down the field, ran right by Wally Donna, the quarterback, who's pretty fast as well. And he was able to hang on to that ball and take it to the house. What a feeling he must have right now. Fingertip catch, too. Good catch off a well-thrown ball. Brink trying to find some help. Now he throws, and it's caught this time for first down by Cody Boyd. 21 unanswered points for the Oregon Ducks now, and they lead by 10. Still plenty of time, 338 left third quarter. Plenty of time, but does Washington State have the juice? Every fourth quarter, they've had their heart broken, and a lot of games have gotten away from them, and you can put the blame on them for that, and they will tell you that. This is not a team that has infighting. They love each other, they're not finger pointing, but at the same time, it's slipped away from them every fourth quarter and it seems like it's happening again here late in the third first down at the 31 brink play fake will go up again airs it out deep and this one is just picked up in center field by finnessy finnessy back to midfield to the 45 yard line and back to the 43 yard line of washington state and that time, Brink really looked like a rookie. He looked like he just couldn't make, it, make up his mind what he wanted to do. I don't know where he was throwing that ball. Almost looked like he was warming up or something. Just kind of tossed it out there. Look at this kind of nonchalant way. He ends up throwing that football, both his feet flat on the ground, maybe trying to get it to Chris Jordan. But if that was the case, what an errant throw and a bad decision, just like you said. And that's a gift for Finnessy. Finnessy's fourth pick of the year, but he's needed help to come off the field. Remember, he went off earlier with a bit of a gimpy ankle, and uh, he once again is uh, in some pain on the sideline. So the Ducks again in Washington State territory at the 42-yard line. They have opened it up here. Now it's Leaf at quarterback from under center. He'll have to run at the 40, at the 35, slides down. As Greg Trent tries to give him a haircut. But he picks up about eight. You got to get down underneath that wave. Brady Leaf showing some savvy. Hasn't played the whole game, but watch him get down. Right before Greg Trent, who's a big hitter, flew right over him. Took some of the green paint off that helmet. Straight back Leaf again. Throws, and that one is almost intercepted. Scott Davis had a hand on it, couldn't quite hold on. That would have been a big break for the Cougs. Davis couldn't get his hands around that. Remember, Oregon was down early in the third quarter, 21 to 10. They've scored three straight touchdowns, and here we go again. It's 31-21 Ducks, and that's a missed opportunity for the Cougs defense. Could have turned around the momentum a little bit there with another turnover. 
Third down, about three. Whitehead, the running back. Leaf out of the gun, the quarterback. Straight back, and a pass caught this time. That's going to be another first down. It is Finley on the receiving end of that. Real guy makes the tackle. Finley's starting to come into his own, too. J.C. transferred from El Camino, and uh, that's always a big jump coming out of the J.C.'s to D1. Yeah, originally he signed with Oregon State, never really made it, went to El Camino College in Torrance, California, and 39 receptions coming into this game, a touchdown tonight, the touchdown to beat Cal in overtime. He's a guy that's stepping up. A lot of receivers on this team stepping up, and Jordan Kent, only three receptions. Here's Jeremiah Johnson, and he gets it going the right way down to the 20-yard line. And all of a sudden, Cougs are back on their heels defensively, and the Ducks are just rolling. And they do have a lot of guys. I mean, you look at USC, and they're the tops in the Pac-10, and a lot of those guys have 1,000 yards, and they become household names. Lindale White, Dwayne Jarrett, Reggie Bush, Steve Smith. But these guys at Oregon, I mean, they got players. Colvin, Finley, Jason Williams, Kent. Demetrius Williams we've yet to see today, and he's their best receiver. He had not done much. Not in the ball game now either. There's a give to Johnson again. He slips by a couple of tacklers and gets it down to the 12-yard line. Another first down for the Ducks. Greg Trent on the tackle. Johnson just stepped out of a couple of tackles. Greg Trent, number 50. I mean, this Oregon team offensively, we talked about the offensive line earlier. They're all back next year. Both Dixon and Lee for sophomores. And Stewart and Johnson, two freshmen, will handle those positions. Colvin, just a sophomore. Finley, a junior. They do lose Demetrius Williams, although, as you said, we haven't seen much of him. And the other Williams, Jason Williams, the redshirt freshman. There's Leaf again with a jump pass. That was the last time you saw a jump pass. Red bar. <laughs> That's right. Good pressure that time. Must have learned that jump shot from Jordan Kent. I really like the way Mike Bellotti with his offensive coordinator, Gary Crote, have really delegated out the quarterback situation here with Clemens down. Both these guys playing. Both of them look pretty good. The offensive line has played well. Not a lot of penalties. They've gotten a lot of receivers and running backs involved. This is a balanced Oregon offense. There's Leaf rolling out to his right. Now he steps up, throws underneath to Calvin, makes the catch short of the 10-yard line. There'll only be a gain of a yard or so. Wally Dada on the tackle, but a nice job by Leaf because that was not his primary receiver. He came back underneath. Cameron Colvin, a big-time recruit at a Concord De La Salle High School. That's in your neck of the woods, Concord, California. Not far. USC, Michigan, Oregon, they all wanted him. He's a duck. Straight back, quick toss to Finley. Finley gets it going in the right direction. He'll be close to a first down. Flags all over the place. Again, that was a pretty well-constructed play. This may be coming back, though. We'll see. Ducks going backwards, so I think it will be against Oregon. It's going to be a legal receiver downfield, I think. And that was a receiver downfield. 55 offense. Forward pass across the line. Five yards. Repeat third down. It was the center, Enoka Lucas. And they're saying even though it was a screen, it crossed the line of scrimmage. Therefore, Enoka Lucas, the center, even though he was doing his job and was downfield to block because it was a screen, was ineligible. So now the ball backs up to the 16-yard line. It's third and 14. 
there still seems to be a little confusion amongst the Ducks here. Reef this time. Hit as he throws, and it's intercepted. Picked off this time by Dildine, and Dildine gets it back to the 28-yard line, and the Cougars dodge another bullet. And that play was made by Matt Mullinex, who was coming hard and hit Leaf right as he released the ball. Matt Mullinex, an overachiever, backup defensive end, coming around on the loop and putting it on Leaf. Causing that throw to become Aaron Steve Dildine, the junior, out of Graham, Washington. High school tailback comes up with the interception. Molinex putting his head right between the one and the six. Washington State got a little life. Let's see if their offense can do something with it. This is the quarter that has hurt the Cougars more than any other. See if they can change that trend. Give to Harrison on first down. Harrison gets into the secondary. That's across the 35 to the 37, a gain of 11. Anthony Trucks on the tackle. This carry for a while for Harrison. And that's a good sign to get him going forward and get him in the right direction. He's very much a running back of momentum. You can see him take four carries straight and have negative two yards, but you can see him take four and take it all the way down into the end zone, ripping off huge chunks of yard. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Give it to Harrison again. This time Harrison runs into a wall and still manages to get positive yards up to the 40-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines. Waddy, you got an update on Finnessy. Yeah, after Finnessy had that interception, he rolled his ankle. He's been having trouble with this ankle all year long. But look, he's back on the field. This is what they did with him. They came over. You can see his ankle steaming. They brought him over. They elevate the ankle. Instead of ice, they open up this thing. This is hot water, about 118 degrees. They reach in with the tongs and they pull out one of these heat wraps. These are individually wrapped. They, they wrap it around the ankle. On a cold night like this, you want to keep all those ligaments loose. You don't have any of those, do you, buddy? <laughs> I might put one in my shorts here in a couple <laughs> minutes. Craig <laughs> throws, and it is incomplete. Ten for Jordan now, a late flag comes in. They'll get an interference call. Dangerous pass, though, I think, thrown by Brent. I'm not sure that's the right call on Aaron Gibson. I think he made a very good play coming around with his arm and knocking the ball loose. There's Jordan going up. Looked to me like Gibson timed it up well. I agree. And came right through his arms, raked the arms down when the ball got there. That was a nice play by Gibson. Pass interference defense. Number five, that was 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, those heat things are nothing new, by the way. They're <laughs> nothing new. They've been around forever. But I didn't need the tongs back in the day. Just reached oh, in. Oh, yeah, I just reached in like a man. And they put some noodles in there for the post-game <laughs> meal, right? Not above that. Pitch this time to Harrison. Harrison caught from behind. Wrestled down by Devin Long. He talked about Devin Long in the first half. His brother won the Outland Trophy. He's also the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. His brother Ryan Long here in Washington State in 2002. So much like Brady Leaf, Devin Long, an Oregon Duck coming here, was a captain for today's game. Lots to prove on this field where his brother became an absolute star. Another tackle for a loss by Devin Long. Pump fake this time, now Brick in trouble. Has to roll away. He's gonna run, and he'll get something positive out of it, but not nearly enough. Alex Brick with the ball. Nada making sure that he got Nada. <laughs> First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. You can save up to 70% every day because we know, you know, we know, and I think they know out there now that it's all about the O. Without question. Oregon's 8-1, quietly in the Pac-10, but they're 8-1 with BCS hopes very much alive. And they really came on in this third quarter. Pilate's been juggling his people very successfully. Wazoo's got to do something here on third down. Got to. Third long. Play fake, Brick in trouble. Steps up, throws, caught by Harvey. First down at the 26-yard line. A big play for the Washington State Cougars. See if it builds their confidence a little bit. Blair Phillips on the stop. 
Nice throw by Brink, nice catch by Harvey. Harvey's had a good game, and Brink, just when you think the guy is on the brink yeah. <laughs> good, I like it. of falling off, he brings his team back and comes up with a third and long. Nice throw to Harvey. Very simple in play. You can get Oregon in the middle of the field sometimes because they stack the box so much and they leave those corners alone. First out at the 26-yard line. Brink straight back. Now he'll run. And it opened up pretty good for him. And Brink will pick up about eight. Down to the 17-yard line. Gibson and Lennon, or Lennon rather, Make the tackle. Cole on ahead. Richard Freshman, Forest Grove, Oregon. Eleven minutes left in the ball game, and it is a world of time. Second out, about two. And Brick changing the play. Give it to Harrison up the gut. First down at the 15 yard line, not a just hold on to him one hand. You see the strength of Haloti Nada just holding back Jerome Harrison. Jerome Harrison, we've talked about him. He's got live legs, but he wasn't gonna escape that grip. Yeah, we were talking, I mean he is a large guy. Unbelievably large. And this will probably be his last year at Oregon, maybe going to leave school for the NFL. The best interior defensive lineman by far in the Pac-10. No question. Swing this time. And getting close to the end zone, he's in. Jordan, touchdown Cougars. No, they're going to say that he stepped out of bounds back at the three-yard line. And a flag is also down, away from the action in the center of the field, also at the three-yard line. I think the linesman says that he stepped out of bounds at the three. And it looks like he did on the replay. Don't know what the flag is about. He did step out of bounds. You see it right there. The flag was for an eligible line receiver lineman downfield. However, the pass did not cross the line. Therefore, the play is legal, no foul. No foul on the play is not a touchdown, but it will be a first down at the three-yard line. Got sorted out nicely. Yeah. Well, it's been a typical Oregon, uh, Washington State kind of game. Look at that. A fullback in the game, Jed Collins. Doesn't happen a lot with Washington State. Only the second time tonight that I can remember. The throw to the end zone, and the catch is made by Benjamin. Touchdown. Benjamin may be hurt. He's slow to get up here in the end zone. I think he got the wind knocked out of him. But a nice call by Mike Levenseller, the offensive coordinator. Bring a fullback in the game. You do that, you suck the linebackers up. And when you suck the backers up, you get it to your tall, tight end. Troy Benjamin, 6'5", stretches and makes the catch. And now he's down. Trying to get his wind, I think. And he just tumbles down again. I thought he kind of fell on his arm or his wrist. Look at this. Look to me like he might have fallen on his on his wrist or see how he falls here. Awkward. Ooh, yeah, the shoulder. But he's looking at his leg, the left leg. Yeah, you're right. Any number of things could be wrong with him. It looks like the left knee that they're checking on. That catch, incidentally, tied the all-time record at Washington State for catches by a tight end. You don't want to see it end like this for Benjamin. I love my fans. Well, he's already got that left knee wrapped. 
here it is again. A nice high throw, putting it in a good place for Benabin. Interesting, because he didn't fall awkwardly. It didn't really look it didn't like look a... like it twisted. If anything, it's bruised and it hit the turf. They will get him to his feet. And well, he's able to put a little weight on it. Appears that he should be okay. Comes off pretty much under his own power and able to put some weight on that knee. So now the try for point to make this a three-point ball game. Gutsy drive by the Cougars to get right back into it here. Langley's kick is up and good, and it is a three-point ball game. Oregon 31, Washington State 28, 10-13 remaining. More than 50 million people The lead of the Oregon Ducks. It is now a three-point ball game. 31-28, Washington State, remember, led by 11 in the third quarter, only to have the Ducks come back with 21 unanswered. Now the Cougs score, the kick to Johnson. And he pops into the open. And we'll take it out of the sideline once more. Jim Watson, Waddy. Uh, Troy Benjamin came over to the sideline. The doctors were looking at him. His left leg was already wrapped because he sprained his knee earlier tonight. They worked on it, got it back on the field. And when he was tackled in the back of the end zone on that touchdown, the defender came down. You guys mentioned that the knee twisted, so they aggravated that sprain again. The doctor came over, looked at it, shook his head and said, Troy, that's going to do it for tonight. Remember, Troy's a senior. It's his last game, and that'll be his last play at Martin Stadium. Well, at least he ended on a high. Quick toss this time to Colvin. Colvin, no place to go. He's run out of bounds after a game of about two. Alex Teams, playing very well tonight, makes the stop. You know, I'm going to go out like Shirley McLean here and go out on a limb. You know, we've seen a couple of USC blowouts. We've seen a couple of UCLA come from behind overtime wins. But, Barry, this is my favorite game of the week done here in 2005. We've had a great game. Bellotti with the quarterback juggle, Jordan Kent, Harrison with the two records, the Hail Mary, that chicken fried steak for breakfast. We've done it all today. Wow. Of course, Lottie and I flew up commercially, as I recall. Well, yeah, the private plane. <laughs> How was that? Was that nice? That was good. Uh, right? You know, the white fur that I wore when I got out of the plane was a little much. Did you, have, did you have Mark Huska wear a little uniform and serve you coffee? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was asleep. <laughs> Quite a ride. Living large, P, living large. <laughs> this is a big third down now for Oregon because the Cougs have got some momentum and their defense has got some momentum. They could right so many wrongs here with a comeback victory over Oregon at home on senior night. So much heartbreak over the year to kind of be quelled if they can win this game. Leaf the quarterback, goes from under center. Give it a Whitehead, Whitehead's gonna be short, I believe. I would have to think the Ducks would punt it here. I can't imagine that they would go for it in their own territory. Katoa Tua on the stop. And they're going to measure this. Don't think he has enough. But Christo Bruce makes the tackle. They are going to be a little short, but Terrence Whitehead that was a good run. Got behind his pads, just like that two-point conversion, and got all he could. Yes. It is short. And they will send the punting unit on. I think you just have to in a situation like this. And maybe the shoe is on the other foot for once this season for the Cougs. Maybe once they come back in the fourth quarter, and break somebody's heart. Brink's gonna have to do it, and he's gonna have to have help from Hill and Harrison.
Dragic to punt. And a fairly short kick. That will bounce backward and go out of bounds short of the 30-yard line. At about the 29-yard line, and that's where Washington State will take over, trailing by three, 8.09 remaining, fourth quarter. Sometimes it feels like you'll never find the one God intended for you. But that person is out there in ChristianMingle.com. be in Los Angeles, Fresno State, the Bulldogs coming, barking, boom, they're mean too, they're mean and angry, those Bulldogs, they play a scrappy brand of football, and I like to watch them play, I love Pat Hill, I, I think Pat Hill, considering what he's got, what he gets there, these guys always put a hat on you, not afraid to play anywhere, Harrison carried on first down for three yards. Brick straight back, blitz comes, Brick steps up. He's at the 35 to 40 and falls forward to the 45 of first down. Recognized that blitz very well. Toyina makes what might have been a saving tackle. Here's Alex Brink showing some poise in the fourth quarter, sees a hole, takes it. And really just slides through for the first down. You don't see Brink doing any sliding or running out of bounds. I mean, this guy really likes to get the ball up the field. And he's not afraid. And he's not a big guy either. 6-3-2-12. Harrison this time. We'll get about two. Haberly makes the tackle. It'll be second and eight. Haberly with a nice stop there on Jerome Harrison. He had a good head of steam going, and he got into that secondary. You never know what's gonna happen when Harrison gets the ball. And you can tell when he's gonna have a big run just by the head of steam he gets going about three yards before the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Break off the play fake, deep drop, throws, and it's caught by Harvey. First down, Cougars. Well, that time the Cougs stretched the field with Jason Hill and bring Harvey in underneath him. Brink lays it in there over the flat defender, A.J. Tuatelli, and a nice grab by Harvey, who's having a big game. Fifth catch of the game for Harvey. First down at the 37-yard line. Harrison straight ahead. Got by the first wave. Got it down to the 35. A gain of two, maybe three. Harrison now 27 carries, 143 yards. Second down and eight. Straight back. Steps up again. Now he rolls out to his right, looking for somebody to come back to the ball, which really does, but the ball was thrown a little bit wide for him. That would have been an amazing play if Hill could have come up with it. Tiptoeing that sideline just out of his reach. Brink trying to direct traffic out there at quarterback. Thought about taking off again. Not quite do or die time yet for the Cougs in third down. They're down three, 528 left, but this is a very big play. Absolutely, the clock not a huge factor, but 528 remaining, three-point ball game. Got to get some positive yardage on this play. And then I would imagine they would consider going for it if they get down to three yards or less. Brink off the play fake will throw, now he's in trouble. Has to roll away from pressure, and he'll run. He will be close to the first down. It will depend on the spot. And I think it's going to be very close. Going to be a little short, but it's going to be fourth and short. You have to think the Cougs are going to go. An incredible amount of art being shown by Alex Brink. Never giving up on the play. 
sees that marker, takes on three duck defenders to try and get the first down. It's fourth and one. They're going to go for the field goal here. Try to tie the game. And it's a long, it's a 45-yard field goal. That's just about at the edge of Langley's range. Well, he hit the crossbar on the other side of the field. From 49. He's 0 for 2 tonight. It's this one. Does it have enough? Yes. Just barely. And the game is tied. Well, I said it was just about the end of his range. <laughs> just about the edge of reason. The Cougs have tied it. 31 Ducks, 31 Cougs, 515 remaining. Johnson at the goal line to the 20, 25 and out of bounds. And let's see who Mike Bellotti will opt for at the quarterback position. I believe is going to be Dixon. This is where it gets crazy switching quarterbacks. Here you are, the end of the fourth quarter in a tie game, you're on the road. How do you not second guess yourself at the guy you put in? Doesn't get the job done. Well, you look at the numbers between these two, and they are very comparable. Dixon, 12 of 18, 155 yards. Remember, 68 of them came on that pass play to Jordan Kent. And Brady Leaf is 12 of 17 for 99 yards. So they're very comparable, the two. Each with a touchdown. Give this time is to Stewart. And he will pick up about two. Remember, Brady Lee, the guy that won the game in overtime last week versus Cal. Maybe it's Dixon's turn this week. Four minutes and 48 seconds. Comes down to a kicking contest. You would have to think that Oregon would have a little bit of an edge. Dixon out of the gun. Throws caught by Williams. And that'll be a first down across the 35-yard line. Wally Donna defending, but Jason Williams, big guy. Mike Bellotti, known to coach in close games in his career in Oregon and known to win a lot of them. 40 and 12. Wow. It's ice water in the veins. Yeah, no, he's like that. With or without the staff. Play fake, Dixon gonna throw, got a man, Finley makes the catch across midfield. First down, Ducks. Dixon just hung in there very nicely that time. Hussein Abdullah on the stop, looks, first down. Looks like Bellotti made the right decision on the quarterback thus far on this drive in the fourth quarter. Dixon's been making all the right throws, showing a lot of maturity for a sophomore out there. Now they, they slot the tight end day. They had thrown to him often when he's lined up in this position. It's time to give this to Stewart. Stewart gets good yardage down to about the 37 yard or the 43 yard line. Greg Trent trips him up, but gain of about six on first down, maybe even seven. Stewart doing a good job there getting his shoulder square and running downhill. Nice positive play on first down. That puts Dixon, this young quarterback, in a good position. Second down and three. Double slot. Out of the gun. Dixon the throw. And it is caught by Day, the tight end, for another Oregon first down at the 36-yard line. Well, Day has been much more of a factor in the Oregon offense today than he has been in most games this year. Without question, and Dennis Dixon has really gotten him involved, calling the tight end's number at least four times. As Oregon's moving the ball here, 
very surgically down the field. You gotta wonder how long do the Cougs let this time run off the clock? They've already, they have all three of their timeouts. The Ducks have used one of theirs. Stewart's gonna be stopped right as he takes the handoff. Scott Davis with a nice play. Incidentally, we have not seen very much of Will Durding here in the second half. No, he made a play in the first half, but it's been mostly Greg Trent. Will Durding, I'm not sure if he was out there for sentimental purposes or for emotional purposes. Definitely was out there making plays, but that knee very tender still. Second down and 12. They come with a blitz, and Dixon running behind Schwartz to the 30, to the 25, and out of bounds, and he'll, I believe, have a first down. Right play at the right time. Dixon showing incredible patience there. A lot of quarterbacks would have flipped that away. See him directing traffic. A lot of nervous energy standing there waiting for the ball. Uses his lineman well. Gives Wally Dodd a little straight arm and gets a first down. Nice play by Dixon. He can hide behind Jeff Schwartz at 351 pounds. Jeff goes with a size 20 shoe. First down at the 25 yard line. And off inside this time. And unable to shake free was Johnson. Dildine running him down. No gain on the play, and a timeout called now by the Cougars with 1.37 remaining. You would have to think that the Ducks are already in field goal range. And we'll jump away as well with 1.37 left, tied at 31. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. My legs. Something Talk about the poise of Grady Leaf. Dennis Dixon showing a lot of poise right now also. And their kicker, Paul Martinez, dancing on the sideline. And off to Johnson. Johnson inside the 20 to about the 17. Tui Toa makes the tackle. And the Cougs will use their second timeout with 135 remaining. The ball at the 18-yard line. It's going to be third down. And a long three, really closer to four yards to go for a first down. Oregon looks to be playing for the field goal. Paul Martinez has some big field goals earlier this year. Houston and Montana. Very accurate kicker, a good kicker. Been the Pac-10 special teams player of the week a couple times. And he's probably going to get a shot here, but I think the Cougs are going to have some time. They got one timeout left after this. There's Paul head bobbing for the techno music that pumps into Barton Stadium. You like that techno, don't you? I love it. Let's go down to the sideline right now, Jimmy Watson. Why do you know this? I know this is going to be a shock to you guys, but I got another weird kicker story. Paul Martinez, the kicker for Oregon, he's kind of a strange kid. When it gets tight like this, he goes over to the sideline and tells jokes to the players and the coaches, but he's also got a superstition about the kicking net. He will not use the kicking net because he says, I only got so many good swings in that right leg, I don't want to waste any. Don't leave it in the gym, huh? Meantime, third down. And about four, play fake, Dixon throws underneath, catch is made by Rosario, and it's gonna be a first down and goal at the five yard line. Nice play by Dante Rosario, 12 receptions on the year, his first tonight, that makes 13 and 11 yard average. He's an H-back, fullback type of guy. Gets into the flat, running full speed, catches the ball, turns up field, takes a big hit from Dildine. And what a push for his team. Now Oregon 
go for the touchdown. They will try to use as much of the clock, I would think, as they can. Cougars have only one timeout remaining. Quarterback draw for Dixon, and he's stopped at about the three. Cougs were kind of looking for that play. Clock ticking down, 112, 111, 110. They will let this clock tick down as much as they can. Now inside a minute. You got to give kudos to Dennis Dixon, the young quarterback. Last week, it was Brady Lee for overtime. This week, really milking the clock, doing a good job. Took a little bit too much time that time, though, and had to burn a timeout. 46 seconds left. They were trying to use as much as they can. Well, our Kiyosara call of the game is this play right here. Jordan Kent, basketball player, track star, and now football player. 68 yards on that one. <laughs> they call that the go round. Go. He runs by people in track and field, too. He's placed in the uh, Pac-10 championships. You would know that. I did the Pac-10 championships. Nobody's on top of the Pac-10 like you. you. Like a tire rests on a rim. Like a lizard sits on a limb. <laughs> you know the Pac-10, brother. You can tell, I mean, you can see Jordan Kent about five yards into that route. You can see that extra hitch in his giddy up, just bam, and then he just shot down the field like a slingshot. Well, you saw the last three-sport athlete goes back, all the way back to 1970, J.D. Hill at Arizona. So it really takes something, and, and, and Jordan Kent is not only participates, but I mean, he's a, He's a very good player, could be a good football player, hasn't played before this year, still learning the game. But a very good basketball player and a very good runner. He's not going to be in right now. This is another huge play. The Washington State defense just hanging on. Second down, about two and a half. The give this time to Stewart, driving for the goal line and short. Now 37, 36, 35 seconds left. On the stop, number 42, Scott Davis. Each team with one timeout remaining. And it'll be third down and goal, less than a yard. Look out for the quarterback keeper here. Dixon may take it in himself. He tries, trying to find the place, and he can't do it. And he's wrapped up back at the two-yard line. And there are six seconds remaining here. Now Oregon will stop the clock. Four seconds left. They'll bring Martinez on to try to win the game. Well, barring some kind of freak accident for Martinez with the snap or a block kick. But remember what you were saying about him with extra points. And basically, that's what we're looking at here. Yeah, he's missed four PATs on the year. But you have to really respect what Mike Bellotti did here on the final drive in the fourth quarter, taking all the momentum away from the Cougs, very surgically moving his team down the field, not in an exciting way. Dennis Dixon on a keeper, couple run plays here and there, pass to the flat to Dante Rosario, got it within the 10-yard line. I mean, a very meticulous, almost painful drive for all these Cougar fans to watch. Mike Bellotti surgically taking apart the Washington State defense. Five minutes and 15 seconds this drive consumed. 73 yards, and they'll try to win it right here and leave nothing for the Washington State Cougars. And if that happens, it's it's just the microcosm, the story of the Cougs' season. In this case, they battled back, got the tie. Now they'll have to come up with something special. They'll have to block this or somehow cause Martinez to miss. It's a 24-yard, not even, yes, 24-yard, no, take that back, 19-yard. Officials coming in, blowing whistles, and 
And I think the Cougs might call a timeout here just to try to freeze Martinez a little bit. It's a 19-yard effort. And here's Bill, no Bill Doba moving down that sideline pretty good. That's the second time in the game he's come out beyond the numbers and called a timeout. Is that a guy wearing sunglasses at night on the Oregon sideline? It's very cool. <laughs> Again, they have so much stuff. And Paul Martinez is out of jokes at this point. I'm sure he is. Did you hear the one about the kicker that missed the 19-yard field goal try? Two field goal kickers walking in the bar. He's still laughing it up. Did you see him there? Devin Long is our defensive player of the game, brought to you by Cooper Tires. 44 and a half career tackles for losses, and a couple more tonight. So this to win it from 19 yards, straight ahead. Out of the whole relief. It is good. Game over. Ducks win. Still one second remaining, so game is not quite over. Better get your Joe Starkey voice ready. You never know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Martinez told the right jokes. Didn't bomb at the improv. Laughs on the kooks. Just more heartbreak for Washington State. It's tough to watch them go down like this week in and week out because they battle so hard in the fourth quarter on senior night. Washington State, once again, just a kick short in the fourth quarter. The Ducks, they're going to finish their regular season at Austin versus Oregon State in the Civil War. If they win out and they don't get a BCS spot, and they could get a BCS spot. If they don't, it looks like the Holiday Bowl which is a good bowl. Hang out with Shamu down there in San Diego versus a Big 12 team. Really having a great season are the Oregon Ducks, a high character team. We talked about it earlier, Barry. Mike Milotti did not expect this from his team. They've lost their, lost their quarterback and they're still battling, winning Pac-10 games, this one on the road. So this will be the last hurrah. Incidentally, Oregon State needs to win that game. They dribble this one down here. Now we're going to see some laterals. There's a pitch back to Harrison. Now Harrison comes up the middle and is cracked, and that's going to be it. No miracles left for the Cougars. And let's talk about today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance. Pontiac will award the school with today's Pontiac Pac-10 game-changing performance of $1,000 to its general scholarship fund. And here it is right here. It is the field goal by Martinez, which turned out to be the game winner. And the Ducks go on to a 34 to 31 win. Next up for them, the Civil War. Oregon State needs that game to get bowl eligible because they lost to Stanford today. Civil War, truly one of the great rivalries, I believe, in college football. The Pac-10's got a lot of them. And Oregon's gonna have to step up and take on those angry bees. Oregon wins it 34-31, a seesaw ball game that saw Washington State lead by 11, only to have Oregon come back with 21 unanswered, only to have Washington State come back.